Hi, my name is Michelle, and this is my so-called handmade lie. I have a blog by the same name, and that is my name on Instagram. On Ravelry, I am Momatronic, and there is a Ravelry group for my so-called handmade life, where we do some knit alongs together, show our whips and FOs, and discuss things that I talk about in the episodes on our episode threads. So be aware, if you respond to any of the questions I ask or talk about the things I discuss there or here on YouTube or on my blog, um, I might be mentioning what you talk about and you're helping to shape our dialogue back and forth and I really appreciate it. So about a month ago is when I last posted and I thought, had big plans, you know, since I had so much more time staying at home now, I would get an episode out every week and then I totally lied and didn't do it. I'm sure a lot of you can um, uh, sympathize or understand how it's just been a really weird time and try as I might to, well, make use of this time, it's been a little hard to be motivated. I actually think that can be a good thing and I've used the time where I didn't seem to be using my time wisely to just be quiet and still. And it's been good for me. It's been good for my insides and it's helped me reevaluate some things. So <clears throat> I, it doesn't look as though I accomplished anything, but I feel loads better for it. So on top of that, there has been some work on my home and landscaping and I've been using this opportunity to spend time with my son since he is living with us now, um, trying to get the most out of that. So I really appreciated you guys telling me what you've been up to recently. Let me show you this sweater before I do anything else because it may get really warm. It is not winter here anymore and I, I may have to take it off due to the sweat mustache. So. This is my love note, and I don't know, I don't think I ever wore it on the podcast. I knit it really quickly before going to the Knitting in the Hills retreat in the beginning of March. In fact, I finished it two days before I was supposed to go, blocked it, and it dried in one night, and I was able to wear it the first day of the event. And then I posted, and I wanted to give it a full episode where I, I mean, an episode where I could really devote time to it. So... This would be that episode. This is knit in Chasing Rabbits Fiber, and I'm going to try to get close to the camera and give you shots of the different details of it. Um, I may have to move my camera back. But this is her fern base, the fingering weight base, and then her gossamer. That's a mohair silk lace blend. And uh, they're held together, and they're both in the Wildwood colorway, which I think is my very favorite color from Dawn. So I was a little hesitant to put the gossamer with the fern, simply because this is a very rich tonal colorway. And even though it's rich in tonal on the lace weight mohair silk, I've found that most dyed mohair silk yarns don't have that, that tonality that regular superwash yarn has, like fingering weight, and so like wool. So I wasn't sure, but oh man, I wanted the fuzzy sweater look and I definitely got it. And I do think you can still see quite a bit of the rich color detail. So you can see this, the yoke, actually I knit a size medium, but I knit it, my gauge was a little off. It was a little tight. And so this fits more like a small, it fits, it totally fits me. I did want a little more ease though than this. So next time I do it, if I use the same size needles, I will probably go up to a large because you've seen, I'm sure, some of the projects are very, uh, some of them have a lot of ease and I really like the way that looks. I did go ahead and crop mine. You can see it's got the high-low hem. I love, I love doing this kind of sleeve where all the decreases happen right at the end. It's so much easier. Caitlin Hunter does that in a lot of her patterns. And this is, of course, a tin can knits pattern, which I know you've all seen. Um, I'm really pleased with this sweater. It actually knit up very fast, like I had it done in a week. And uh, I didn't even have to do a lot of crazy knitting to get there. So 
I did find for a size medium that is at probably a tighter gauge. Um, I did longer three quarter length sleeves and I made it this is actually not the cropped version. This is the slightly longer than the cropped version, and yet it's still cropped on me. Some because of my gauge, and also I'm a long torso person. So I've uh, I used every bit of my Chasing Rabbits Fern base, but I had quite a bit of the gossamer left over. So I just wanted to show you one more time. This is my link. So my navel is like right here. So. I loved wearing this. I was so thrilled and I thought, I just want to have at least one thing by one of the designers that's going to be there or one of the dyers done before I go. And this was it. I have knit a Caitlin Hunter. I, I did bring that. I knit two of her sweaters. I brought those too, but I was really excited to wear this and show Dawn. And then she asked me to be in the runway show they have which is fun because it shows a lot of the designs and some I hadn't seen from some of the designers there. And they really inspired me to want to knit them. And then some I had seen that uh, I just found, I don't know, when you see something in person rather than on a print page, you realize I really think that works well on uh, my body type. I really would like to have that. So uh, that was a little embarrassing, but it was worth it to, uh, show off her beautiful art her yarn is gorgeous so my next project let me show you i told you this i believe in the last episode i i've got also in her fern base this is violet veil and joy and um i was working on trying some different color pairings which this may not seem different to you guys uh to me it is I think it is, but I, this probably is not unusual for me, but I do think this colorway added is a, a bit of a departure from my normal color choices. I am going to knit her Traveler's Loop. This is the one on her project page, and you can see the texture that's created with the two yarn colorways, but this is not a very high contrast. So anyway, I'm excited to start that. That will be a really good chatting with people online or TV watching project, I believe. So now that's out of the way. If I have to take this off, I can. So I asked you guys, you know, how are you doing? How have you been doing in the last few weeks? And I'm really thankful that some of you answered and I'm glad to hear that you're all doing okay. Anna said that she's been trying to read but it's been a little hard, or it was at the time when she answered, to focus. She kept wanting to watch the news, but she's been uh, trying watercolor and ink drawings, and I've seen some of that on your Instagram, Anna. I thought that was a really good idea. Watercolor is one of those things I've always wanted to do, <clears throat> aside from when I was a little kid. Um, you remember the little sets you would buy at like a gas station? Uh, we would get those every once in a while on a Sunday with our dad. I'm glad to hear that you're doing all right and you're finding ways to busy your mind rather than just stress out. Jen said that social distancing hasn't changed their life all that much. They had a family-run business and they can spend more time at home doing that than in the office. They've tried to use the time to go ahead and take care of some things that needed to be done on their property in their yard anyway. And then, you know, her son can take online courses and ski, and they go on family walks with the dogs. Uh, and if it's warm enough, take the chihuahuas. It's incredible to me to think that even a month ago, it was still so cold somewhere that you couldn't bring your dog out on a walk. Uh, it's just not like that here. But that was nice to hear, Jen. Lori has been unpacking from her last move and knitting doing yoga, hiking. You've got some great hikes uh, in your neck of the woods, Lori. <clears throat> and I'm guessing those trails aren't closed off to you because a lot of people's trails are, you know, right now. I know in Colorado they were closing off all the parks. Still warm. Rachel has a new puppy. There is nothing to distract you from something stressful than a puppy. Of course, that is its own type of stress, but it's kind of a more manageable, normal type of stress. 
I know that getting our last uh, dog was uh, an ordeal. Breaking her, I mean, it took basically a year before she really calmed down. But it was very therapeutic for me, actually. Um, Rachel also is homeschooling already, so this hasn't been a big shift for her kids and learning. But they miss getting out and doing things with friends. They miss being outside more. I hear you. But she does have her knitting, she said, to comfort her. Adina's son is staying with them, and so I guess you're getting some good family time there <clears throat> because he can work from home. But uh, she also said that she's a... Uh, she and her husband have been offering private lessons <clears throat> and tutoring to children who are doing online classes right now. I think that's a great idea, Adina. I love that you're doing that. That's something I haven't even thought of. I've heard of some teachers here locally saying it's really been a stretch for their students and difficult. And then I've heard about, I don't know a lot of kids in school right now, but I've heard it's been tough to get laptops and you know computer access and everything so how wonderful to at least be able to offer that um, she's also checking in with older people uh, older friends a little more making sure they're doing all right <clears throat> and that kind of goes back to what we were discussing a couple episodes ago about how can we help others how can we uh, extend ourselves to the people around us so um Katie, boy, Katie has busied herself with lots of organization and cleaning. I feel like you're trying to make me feel bad about myself, Katie. Um, she has repotted plants, organized, gotten rid of things, cleaned up, and then doing lots of cooking and music practice. And then you said like a month ago when you posted this that you weren't sewing much, but I've seen since. You've been sewing quite a bit. I think you win the prize for the best masks that I've seen made on Instagram. I think yours are the cutest. And so I, I hope you're over your cold also. Um, but it does sound like you're just using this time to kind of get with it and stay creative and busy, which is awesome. Pam is enjoying everyday things just a little bit more, like sitting outside, watching the birds at the feeder, enjoying the sunshine, nature. Also, um, trying to enjoy making meals at home every day. And I'm, I'm surprisingly enjoying that. I kind of got sick and burnt out of cooking at home every day because that's what I did, you know, for years when my children were growing up. But that last little stretch of high school with both of my children and then when just my son was in high school, we were so busy with their activities just... So many nights we would eat at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, and making the meal was just this crazy, like a, I don't know, it was like some sort of sprint, and I was competing. I literally heard a gun go off, and then all of a sudden I'm rushing, and I'm throwing ingredients in an instant pot, and, you know, it was very high pressure and very hard for me to multitask while I cook. I like to just be chill about it. Otherwise, I will forget some in integral part of the recipe if I don't. So this has been completely laid back cooking. No one just about eats at the same time. I mean, my husband and I usually eat supper together, but that's not even always a given. He may work late, so it's no big pressure. There's snack food if anyone's hungry before. We don't have any event to rush off to. There's no soccer tournament. There's nothing happening. And we've been eating very healthfully. I'm grateful for that, that we've been able to, um, and also saving money by eating at home. We haven't had a shortage of food items. We did for a few weeks there, probably three weeks, but we were okay. We could always find something to eat at the store, but there were just simple basics like lentils were sold out for a month, but I think everything's calmed down now, and anyway, it's been... It's been, it's felt like when I was a new mom or a uh, newly married and I was learning to cook and I was just trying different things and it was very relaxed, that's how it feels. It's been nice. I'm glad you're experiencing that too, Pammy. Pammy's also praying more and uh, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm using your Instagram name, Pammy. 
Um, Pam is also praying more and trying to share her positive attitude with family and the people around her. That's something that you can always do for others. Michelle uh, suggested that I do more paid content advertisements for my Patreon, you know, um, like maybe uh, show myself checking for lint and coins and pockets before I do the laundry. That is a great idea. That is fascinating. Everyone will love that. Everyone's going to love you for that, Michelle. Thank you. I'm going to take your advice. Um, Els said that she is also trying not to just sit transfixed in front of the news. And for a few weeks, she just couldn't do anything. She couldn't focus at all. Um, and she had shared some of her situation. Her mother was traveling when they had like a lockdown in her country. So her mother is actually not able to be home. She's having to quarantine somewhere else. And that's nerve wracking, right? However, I'm so glad to hear your mom is safe. You're safe. And this is just a matter of being patient and waiting. One thing that's helped her is she's back to the knitting, as long as it's not too complicated. Like lace and all, her brain just can't focus enough for that right now. But she is meeting with some friends from high school online and they're chatting together regularly. And that's been pretty good for her. That's a great idea, Els. I've actually done some online visits with people too and it has done me a world of good. Claudia said that she is limiting her TV time also. That's a, I think a lot of us are having to do that, but you've been painting and knitting in your free time, which sounds wonderful. Amanda said her job is something she can do via phone. So it hasn't changed her ability to work, which is great. And that quarantine hasn't been too bad. I'm glad to hear that, Amanda. Now, Jay Shree shared something um, that is kind of like what we were talking about in the last two episodes, how we can spend ourselves on other people. And I just thought this was really sweet. She lost her mother years ago and grieved hard over her. But after several months, she realized both of her parents gave her so much love through her life that certainly she had enough now. She would be okay and she could share what she has. And so she started adopting um, women about her mother's age just to kind of spend time with and do things for. And she calls them her adopted mummies. And that's a way that she's been able to turn her own frustrations or hardships in life out. She's been able to turn toward others and it's probably been very healing for you. I'm sure that helped with the grieving process. Um, Jay Shree, that's a wonderful thing. Thank you for sharing that. I have an aunt and you make me think of her. Her husband had dementia and then Alzheimer and he passed away with it. And she definitely grieved after he passed away, but it wasn't long before you know, he had to live at a nursing home the last few years of his life, and she visited him every day. But it wasn't long after his passing that she started going back to the same nursing home and just visiting other people. I think she held a devotional for people there, but that's something she did regularly. Every week, she went and did that until she was unable to. That was many years, and uh, I always found that very sweet and inspiring that she took her loss and that's what she did with it. Alyssa mentioned something that I feel like we can all identify with. This time of uh, being in, you know, cooped up indoors, she's trying to view it less like being a hostage and more like this is a personal retreat. So she has time to work on her herself, um, gratitude, forgiveness, love, she has time to walk, to do yoga, to knit, to just rest her soul. That's a really healthy attitude, Alyssa, to see this as a retreat and less of a being held back from something and more like an opportunity to stay in, to hold yourself back. I, uh, I think a lot of people have been dealing with this differently. And for some, there's been a pressure to accomplish. What's wrong with us is what I'm wondering. What's wrong with us that we can't just all be still 
<laughs> Just be still. <laughs> My son is cooking. This is the moment it must happen. This is his breakfast at one o'clock. I asked him to please stop the high-pitched, loud whisking noise. Okay. You may not be able to hear it, but it's like in my head. I think there's a lot of people feeling anxiety right now because since they're not having to go to work as much, since they're not maybe required to do a lot of things they once did or they just can't, they feel like they're supposed to be accomplishing all sorts of things while they're at home. And I know you've seen lots of articles about it. I've seen people sharing them on Instagram and I've talked with people who feel like they should be doing more with themselves. I, I think we ought to give ourselves some slack right now. What is wrong with us that we have to take even a time of world crisis and make it a competition? Oh, well, I learned a third language last month in quarantine. You know, I just say no. No, if I want to be in a funk, I'm just going to be in a funk at a time like this. And I was. I was in a funk, y'all, the last few weeks. Not terrible. I wouldn't say I was depressed. I just felt, I felt like I was at a place where I needed to make a decision. Just some inner work, as Alyssa said. I have really had to confront some confidence issues in myself. There are some things I wanted to do, and I was, like, on track for it. And then life took a turn, and I was needed in other ways for several years there. And now I feel like, um, like I can't get back to what I wanted to do. Like, oh, there's no point now. Uh, nobody cares about that. I wouldn't be any good at that. And I just have to get over that way of thinking. For me, I think it's just going to be diving into it. Part of that is why I'm changing my website up. And I'm really doing it now. I've talked about it for two years. It's really going to happen. But uh, there's other things too. So anyway, um, good for you, Alyssa, that uh, you're... Uh, you got some good, you're getting some quality time just to be yourself and take care of yourself. I know everyone's situation is different and depending on where you live, what your line of work is, your family members, I know. Um, but for one, one thing we can all do is say, I am not going to be pushed into or pressured into accomplishing something. I mean, maybe I'll scan some of those dreaded photos. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll work on my blog. Maybe I won't. Um, I think it's okay sometimes to just be still and quiet. We've been watching quite a bit of television. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of TV knitting. Um, I have like five seasons of Malcolm in the Middle to prove how much knitting I've been doing. Uh, watching that show and a lot of my friends online going through old photos and they're putting posting them. Um, I just seeing old photos of myself, it made me think about uh, digging out some scrapbooks and looking, and I might share a few things here with you. I mean, one thing people have often said that I have a really good photographic eye, that I am great at taking photos, and I hear, oh, you have such beautiful photos. Um, well, I just want you to know that I came out of the box that way, pretty much. Um, yeah, as you can see with the photos from my scrapbook, I am just um, incredibly photogenic. And I've been honing my craft since, I don't know, 1989. I like for it to be natural. I don't like a lot of props. I like for things to look a little more organic. As you can see. Speaking of uh, pressure to accomplish while you're on quarantine, I finally felt like, okay, I need to at least try to make a mask because you couldn't find a mask anywhere here. I don't know anyone who has them. I was thinking, you know, I have relatives that could use one and we may be required to wear a mask 
in our county soon if we are to go anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere, but my husband does have to go to work. So I got some old, uh, an old pillowcase and I thought, well, I'll try and make one out of this. And if it works, fine. I was going to hand sew the first one because my sewing table is still in pieces being modified for however long. It's one of those projects I should be doing on quarantine. And, um, I just didn't want to take up our whole dining room table with the sewing machine and all the stuff. So I thought, well, I'll just cut my fabric and I'll just hand sew. I can do a simple stitch, a line, you know, and this was a, a very low sew pattern. And, uh, oh yeah, that was a real fail. <laughs> that was really bad. It was not easy to sew fabric. It wasn't cotton. It wasn't like quilting cotton. It was, had a little bit of sheen and, and, satiny nature to it and yeah it was just no fun it was not easy to do at all it wasn't it wouldn't iron good so I just uh I worked on that all one morning and then I said okay screw this I'm done trying to be uh miss quarantine mask maker of the year I'll buy some masks and I did find some on Etsy and purchased them and had them sent to family members. Some people right now feeling like they're supposed to be doing lots and doing for others and, and accomplishing. Uh, that mask could be like, send someone spiraling. Uh, it didn't, you know, I didn't fall into the deepest of depressions over it. I felt really frustrated that I wasted the morning on it, but then I was like, okay, well, there you go. I made my effort and now I have permission to just do other things. Um, I can do plenty of other things for people. Like I volunteered and let several older people around me know I can get your groceries, I can get your drugs and drop them off on your front door. And I let some other people know to be, you know, giving my name out. Also, I can donate and I have, and there's plenty of other things I can do besides, um, making masks out of my little one pillowcase. Besides that, I don't have the greatest track record with masks, so. Have you guys been feeling that pressure though? Like you're supposed to be, I don't know, reading all the great works of literature and uh, I don't know, starting a new business and learning a third and fourth language in your free time and doing handstands. Have you been getting the handstands, yoga handstands uh, ads on your Instagram? I totally fell for it. I got a, a it wasn't a handstand prep. It was a, um, well, it was basically core prep, but it was a lot of interesting type of exercises, which were all interesting, but uh, it's all over Instagram and I'm not the only one. I guess so many people are doing yoga because they can at home, but Oh yeah, the the twenty somethings going up into circus handstands uh, could be it could be discouraging to the average person. Anyway, um, I just feel like yeah, everybody just be quiet, and we have enough drama. We're all cooped up in the house together. No one can really go anywhere. Um, a lot of our plans were have been changed. And like a lot of other people, money's tight. People are losing their jobs. Um, my son has lost his, at least for now. And a lot of people my husband works with have been laid off and his uh, job is decreasing. It's just, we have enough going on. Plus we're all here together and there can be tense moments. I don't understand. How could you value my work so little. Haven't you seen the amount of time I've been putting in? I've been working hard. How could it mean so little to you? Just explain it to me. Help, help. I don't understand. Why won't you even look at me when I talk to you? Do I need to do everything around here? Can you guys help just a little? There's no energy in this house. No? Nothing? 
Well, yeah, thanks a lot. It's all about her. I think she hears me talking about her. Did you see the way she was looking at me? Did you notice? She does it all the time. I've used this time, like I said, to kind of be quiet and focus on what I want to put my energy into. And uh, one thing I do want to do is get more active in our Ravelry group. Um, I set it aside with a lot of other things happening, but now I want to get back to it. And Lori had a really good idea for the group. She has went and got Metropolitan Knits, which I recommended that book a while back on a podcast episode. She got it and she enjoyed it, and she was wondering if we would be interested in doing a Ravelry group book swap, like have a thread for it, and people could say, hey, I've got this book, if anyone wants it, you want to swap me with something else, you know, you can arrange it through that group. I think that's a great idea, and she had mentioned this might not be the best time for it, but maybe after this, um, the coronavirus cr crisis, where it's putting a strain on, uh, deliveries you know our uh, local post office is w working all the time and they're stressed out and they know it's hard for them but at the same time they were threatening to close the post office so i'm not really sure if it's good or bad to be mailing unnecessary things right now but i'm just going to err on the side of caution and say once this kind of clears up to a point where it's not a strain on postal workers definitely Lori, i would like to do a Knitting, craft, crochet, whatever, book swap thread. That is a wonderful idea. Thank you for that. And she asked what some of my favorite books are, and so I've got a few to show you guys. I think my favorite, I've shown you several times, Knitting Without Tears. All of the Elizabeth Zimmerman books are good, but since this was the first one I ever read by her, it's special to me. And it's the one I have actually knit something out of. So I've got notes on the side for a, a raglan yoke and then I also have kind of planning you can see this type of modified like saddle sleeve that's something I've been wanting to do I thought it would look good on my husband to make a sweater like this and I've never done it and I saw um, Natasha Hornby had a sale recently she has a, she said it's an updated version of Elizabeth Zimmerman's modified uh, hybrid yoke like this. And it's, I think Callisto is the name of it. Anyway, I got that pattern because it was on sale. I think it was half off. And uh, I'm interested to try it and see how it works. It's a different, it's not a straight fit sweater like this. It's got a little more interest to it. But this is um, just a pleasurable read. It's, it's pleasurable to read if you do crafting, um, you know, if you're into it, if you're into knitting and crochet and all that, you get, you'll get what she has to say about it and the mindset of a crafter. And also interesting ways of looking at our creativity. And then within just this little book, you have all the skills you need to clothe your entire family in the winter, any age and to modify and feel free to just wing it on things. So it's a classic. I'd say it's my very favorite. My most reached for book though was this one. And I've shown you this so many times. Look at how frayed this book is. Debbie Stoller's Stitch and Bitch. Um, still has patterns that are um, interesting to work. And I know I've gone through and I've showed you some of these. And you probably remember them. Look, these are some big ones. I always wanted to do the hoodie. I have a friend that did this, and that's a nice one, too. So there's a lot of, uh, also this peppermint twist. So there's a lot of patterns that are still just as doable as they were then. But it's just the best for graphics teaching you how to knit. Let me find an example like this little cast on direction. These graphics really do the trick. Um, I like looking at a static image. I'd rather look at two images that would jog my memory about how to perform something than wait for a YouTube video to load up, wait for an ad, wait for some introductory talk, 
you try to fast forward through, oh, no, you went too far. When you go back, oh, you got to watch another ad. I don't like all that. So this has been really helpful to me. That's Debbie Stoller. Both of those books can probably be found at any half price bookstore because they were so prolific. Um, and people are still buying them and enjoying them. Now, in the same way, I have recently picked up this one because I, I did my crochet granny stripe for a, a friend and then I started my scrappy blanket make along blanket. I made a Superman cape for a baby several years ago and now I've started a new project. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Okay, so when I said I took some time to just be and be quiet, it would be fine if all I did was sit there, but instead what I did was something completely different than anything I planned. I just wanted to try crochet. I wanted to try crochet and not get all bogged down with how perfect it was. And for some reason, I don't worry about that when I'm crocheting. Whereas with knitting, if something doesn't perfectly match, this I know how to fix it, so I'm really anal about it. Not with crochet. It has been a complete pleasure to work on this project. So this is one of Alexandra Tavel's patterns and it's a canteen bag. I don't have the strap attached yet. It's still actually still drying. It's still wet. It's been days. It's a very densely knit crochet um, cotton bag. It's done with Lion Brand 24-7. And so you see I've got my little strap here. Um, I was not sure how I would block it and Heather on Instagram mentioned putting some plates in here Like just stack some plates inside of it That's a great idea and I tried it I do have a stack of plates, but they're a little too small for this and the others are a little too big She even mentioned frisbees with something in between But what I decided on was just plastic bags from the store grocery bags and I filled it it's losing its shape a little now. I mean, it's actually pretty much dried in the correct shape. But what I had here was the back was slightly differently shaped than the front. I knit the back piece first and I didn't quite know what I was doing. And I had such a good time learning. And this was inspired by knitting friends online, a group meetup, uh, just one member wanting to learn crochet better. And it just got all of us saying, well, let's all do crochet. And so in the week I was able to make this. So the front was slightly different than the back, but with the blocking, the sizing is fine now. This does not have a closure. It just holds it. This is the closure. This tongue goes over and it goes through the strap, but it doesn't have a zip closure. I am thinking I might would like to add a zip closure here. I'll let you know if I do. I modified the, um, this, these D rings aren't part of the pattern. I just did that because I had them and modified the strap holders here. So it's not quite finished drying, but you get the idea of the shape of it. And hopefully it will hold its shape well, even if it's not stuffed full of something. What an enjoyable experience. So nice. Uh, I noticed someone online that I follow was just doing a rug in this shape and really enjoying it. And they've never really done crochet before. They've always knitted. And we both could, uh, we we're in agreement that it is very freeing to do something you don't really know how to do. So you really can't ruin it in your mind. You're just excited to be learning. It's very much like back in the day when I got this book. So <clears throat> that was something I did to kind of deal with stress and just sort of, um, I don't know, uh, what's the word? T just totally sidetrack. Give myself a sidetrack from all that's going on and kind of remove myself from pressure. So uh, this book, I mentioned it, Lori, it does have some patterns that I would still to this day make. I love this granny, what is it called? Granny's No Square bag. I, I think I've shown this on the, um, podcast before. There's a lot of bags, some shrugs that are cute like this. And, um, there's a few sweaters. 
there's the, the crochet version of the Jolly Rogers there. This is just a the tiniest little thing. Yeah, these have been made quite a bit, I think, by people. That would be a great thing to learn on because a child isn't going to notice how you, you know, finish or begin your rows. Um, this little, it looks like the plastic grass mats that used to have the plastic daisies on them when I was a kid. I really want to make one of those for my camper. So those are two old ones that are favorites much used. Another one that's kind of an oldie but a goodie, and I've knit quite a bit out of it, and you can see I have all these notes stuck in it. This is uh, Greetings from Knit Cafe. Um, there's some really great patterns here. I uh, This is a fun one. It's very, to me, very retro. I mean, they came back in style in the 2000s, but like a Chanel style sweater. That's a super classy looking uh, rendition of it. I knit this for my husband and it worked really well. He loves it. That's the one I tried on, on that giant sweater episode I did. I tried it on. It was like my favorite of all of the ones I had made. I made this um, baby blank, baby uh, sweater. And I did it in yellow cotton also. I just don't know if it was good enough quality cotton. I made this. I made the entire thing. I never put the ribbon through because it was just very ill-fitted on me. I think I used too thick a cotton. It was worsted and this is very delicate and sweet looking, but um, yeah, it didn't look so to me, on me. It was very frump -a dump <laughs> It did not look good. Oh yeah, and this one, which is still one of my favorite sweaters to have made, the slouchy cardigan with the hood. The little um, coiled uh, front ends that hang open. Yeah. Oh, and I made this bikini. This is horrible. Uh, it's not a horrible look. It's just no one who had made it in Ravelry had any real success with getting a good fit, but I think it's just hard to make a bikini out of a non-stretchy fabric. I used similar uh, yarn. It was very cute. Now I can see how the top would work, but the bottom looked like a diaper cover. It just was wool. Um, disappointing. I feel like I even made some more things. But anyway, there's a lot of really, actually all of the patterns are really nice, really well made. These socks, uh, these are cute. Really well made and the book is beautiful in design. So there's also a couple of really pretty dresses in here and knit dresses, you know, like this is pretty elegant. So a lot of variety, blankets, bathrobes, toys, baby stuff, a yarmulke, they have everything. So I would recognize, rec recommend this and it can often be found secondhand, you know, people might want to trade things like that. I don't want to trade that book. <laughs> I still want to make things out of it. I love it. Now here's two new ones that I feel like are going to go on the favorites list. Um, I'm very excited about them, but I haven't really delved into them yet. I have Strange Brew. I've looked through it. I know the things I want to knit. I just haven't actually gotten into it yet. I haven't done it. But Strange Brew is so great. I, I know you've heard about it. It's probably you have. Um, it's showing you how to take color work patterns and move the motif from one type of thing to another, modify, change your color placement. There's lots of ideas for being creative here. And I will show you the one I most want to make is cartography. And I like this version with the background color being light rather than dark as in this one. I just love the way this looks. So. This is definitely, I think, going to be a favorite. I'm very interested in it right now. And then like the rest of the knitting world, pretty darn interested in 52 weeks. Every single pattern in here I would like to make. I have no idea which one I will start with, but I want to start with this Mockingbird Fiber Company yarn. You know, I showed you my Odeline socks. I think I had a proper episode on, on them. I boxed up all my winter socks and put them like to the side 
Um, I just keep them in a box because we don't wear wool things very much here. I didn't want moths and things to get into them. Um, so my Odeline socks are in there, otherwise I would have them. But I knit it in the same yarn. It was uh, Mockingbird Fiber Company's Rustic Sock. And that one was a uh, green color. It was just a one of a kind. They call them odd birds. This is their Delta Dawn colorway, which I think is beautiful. It's one of my favorite colorways by them. It's a kind of a, a, a pink, tan, nude color. A little bit of a rose gold look to it. It's very, very pretty and very natural looking. And with all this texture, this tweed and texture, I just love it. So this is what I want to use. Now there's a lot of texture that comes with a tweed yarn. So I don't want to use a pattern that will be overwhelming of uh, the tweediness. I want the tweediness to shine. Um, I literally, I mean, I could go through here. There's so many. Every one of them I want to knit. Don't know that every one would work. Unity might be good. It's got some texture. It's not lace, so I'm thinking that the tweed would do well. Imker. Heart of choke. So, I mean, I can go through this book. There's just a million, and I'm sure you've seen. If you haven't looked at all of these sock patterns, go on Ravelry and look up the book. It's just so beautiful. The layout of the book, you know, it's from the people who do line up. The layout of the book is beautiful. The patterns are beautiful. Oops. Yeah, I didn't have any. I didn't show any info. The pattern is beautiful and the photography gets me. I just really love good knitwear photography. So that's usually what I focus on when I, oh, this also. Um, these are called Turning Point. Tell me those aren't beautiful. Now imagine those with this color. Nice, huh? So, I would call this a new favorite, a new classic. Lori, so those are some suggestions that I have, but I bet everyone has some they wouldn't be, they would be willing to part with. I do. I do have some knitting books I would be willing to part with. Um, I showed you my canteen bag. Um, I'm just enjoying doing things that are a little creative break that are different from my norm. Um, just for the fun of it, no pressure. This was one of those, and I showed you, I had this done um, right after I got back from the retreat, right when everything kind of went down. I told you I had to block it, so I've blocked it now. It's still very uh, thin, but look, it, it fits fine on the, the bamboo pole. It's also got pretty long tassels. I need to trim those. I think I'm gonna trim them to about here because I have a cat being so long, I didn't think it would hang where a cat could reach it, but there's really nowhere on the wall where I want to hang it with chair row that I can hang it where this won't be a distraction to a kitty cat. So I'm gonna have to find a place. I thought I would hang it in here, just right on this wall over here. We'll have to see. I'm gonna have to rig something up, but I wanted to show you guys how nice and smooth it looked. I still want to do, this is Jill Lerman, I want to do her other pattern. I told you I was going to modify it. It's going to be a little wider. I have a piece of driftwood I would like to hang it from, and I think that would look really nice. So it looks a little more like macrame, even though it's knitting, it kind of mimics that look. It's very textural. I finished my Aquarian blanket, and I'm pretty sure I showed that to you in the last episode. I still have it to give to the mother-to-be. She is waiting to be able to travel to this area. Okay, so crochet has got me looking. Doing that, I've gotten so much more crochet in my feed on Ravelry, and I'm loving it. I'm enjoying seeing more on Instagram, too. So I don't know if it's the algorithm because I'm looking at more crochet or because I've been posting more crochet, but uh, there's quite a few 
uh, patterns by uh, Tony Lipsy that I see that I like by Alexandra Tavel and a new designer to me is Rachel Misner and she has this sweet pea top. This is on Ravelry. I really like this top. I like the fit of it. Um, I like, I would like it with even more ease for summer, but it's a DK weight cotton yarn. And what I was thinking, I think it's meant for a lion brand, um, Trubu, which is a bamboo rayon. Uh, I actually have some bamboo, but it's kind of variegated and I don't think I would like it in this. I also think Trubu is kind of shiny. It looks a little disco for me because of the bamboo, but what I do have a lot of is Wool in the Gang, Shiny Happy Cotton. I actually have a lot in this green color. Now this is kind of bright. I might want to do a softer color for this top. I like the color that she is wearing actually. But here is what I have, and I have quite a bit of this. I have this ball plus a cone that was deeply discounted a few years ago. Super bright green. And I thought, maybe I'm more of a neutral person. Maybe that's a little vibrant for me. But then I thought, you know what? I like the color, though. Why not just do what I want and not worry about it? What is the worst that can happen when wearing, just from wearing a bright green uh, top? So I will uh, be knitting on that, I think, soon. Um, Alexandra Tavel actually has a whole new collection out. You know, I did that um, Sunset Ringer a while back. That She has another in Tarsia. It's like a tiger base, um, which is, you know, I guess Tiger King or whatever is kind of a big deal right now. But it's kind of got an urban safari look to it. That looks like fun, and she did it in wool this time, not cotton. Um, and she's got another uh, strappy tank, but there's a kind of a almost racerback looking tank, one that comes in a little. I don't know the name of this kind of tank that comes in a little. It doesn't hit right at your shoulder here. Uh, that's one that I would like to knit. I like the color of the yarn she used for it, actually. Into the Wild, that's the name of it, Into the Wild Tank. So I like this, um, the way it, the, there's an indention here. The tank is actually a little closer to the neck. Anyway, that just requires say, maybe three or four balls of Kobu, which is that cotton bamboo yarn I used for the Sunset Ringer, and I did enjoy working with it. It was lighter weight and softer than this um, shiny happy cotton that I was just holding. Uh, so these are summer tops, but not all crochet. In, into the wild is not crochet, obviously. And another thing I've been wanting to make that's very summer in these very summer colors. These are very sorbet-like colors to me. This is Willow Yarns, their field base, which is a linen cotton blend. It's about 53-47. I want to make the pomelo bag that was in Pom Pom several years ago. You see the bag. Here's a better image. I'm excited to knit that. I would like to do that this summer. I also have some uh, t-shirt yarn from Wool in the Gang to knit a, another beach bag. I would like to do that also. So those are a departure from what I normally do. And to me, they're just kind of a stress-free, fun project that was a nice break for my brain, just to totally go a different direction than normal. So let me show you a few, I have quite a, a bit of finished projects and I'm not even gonna show them all. I wanna give some their due at a later date, but I have been um, speaking of summer talks and also the uh, sec third season of Killing Eve came out. So I was like, gonna line up when I started knitting this top with when that began. And then I got busy that day and I missed the, the uh, episode, the first episode. I had to wait a couple of days to see it. It's called the Lacy Sweater and in quotes it says Villanelle. So this is named after Villanelle, I'm guessing. 
It definitely looks like something very, very chic that she would wear. Tell me that's not gorgeous. So that is what I am working on primarily right now. I am this far on the body. So I'm more than halfway through before the part before you uh, separate for the sleeves. It's knit in the round up to the sleeves and then you separate front and back. And I'm just gonna kind of spread this out so you can see that pattern is excellent. This has been so much fun to work on. And she does have one long chart that shows you everything you do and you do it twice, right? It's the front side and then it's around to the back side. And I finally figured out that on iBooks I can use a markup tool so I can score and make little, you know, tick off each row. So I don't have to keep some little piece of shredded, half shredded paper with me that my dog eats because he likes to eat my things. So um, I'm really pleased with this. It's been so much fun to work on and doesn't it look nice and woolly? It's not though, it is Barocco Remix Light. I used some, I started my May top by Andrew Mowry maybe last summer. I'm going to finish that one too. That's next after this. It was in Barocco Remix Light and I love this yarn. It has a good grip to it. So you can see it's like a, a cotton, linen, silk, everything blend. Nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, linen, and flax. Linen and flax, same thing. Um, but it feels uh, rustic and grippy like wool. And there is a bit of, just a bit to me, of elasticity here. Enough to make knitting with this feel like I'm knitting with sock yarn, wool sock yarn. I am not hurting in my hands at all. This to me is revolutionary. I did not get far enough on my May sweater to really feel, and I made so many mistakes in the short rows at the very beginning <laughs> that I finally set it aside. I didn't really get to dig into this yarn and appreciate how easy this is to knit with. I don't see any reason to use anything else. Now this says DK. To me this could work in place of a fingering weight yarn unless it blooms great, greatly when you wash it, which I will find out when I'm making this. I just don't see any reason to use anything else. Say if you needed a sport fingering DK weight, I would just go with this for summer. This is my new favorite summer yarn. I also really like Lindy Chain. I mean, working with just plain cotton for this bag was nice. However, it was knit at such a, I'm sorry, crocheted at such a tight gauge to get a dense accessory type fabric that it was uncomfortable. Like I knew after I made it, I, I kind of wanted to make another one and I was like, no way, I can't do that to my thumbs. I was having that cramp I get from working on something tight and also from holding my phone up <laughs> while I'm in bed to read. So Villanelle, so nice. Um, I'm very excited about that. <clears throat> so that's one of the shows also we've been watching because, you know, I talk about TV too much. We, um, I've been doing Zoom meetings for a couple of the things I do during the week and that has really been good for me. I'm glad to be able to keep in touch with those people. I've also been doing a Google Hangout. I've learned how to do that. I feel so uh, on top of the tech world. And then we tried Scener with my daughter and son-in-law where you watch movies at the same time with people remotely. It didn't work so well. There was a delay, a lag in the uh, voices matching the faces. So plus we could hear theirs and then we would hear ours after and that was kind of maddening so we finally just turned ours down and listened <laughs> through our computer to the sound on there so that didn't work so great but we think we have a um, we think we have it worked out now we know how we'll do it tomorrow or actually tonight we're gonna try again I'm not sure what we're gonna watch we watched the uh, the decline and uh, 
because because for some reason you know we have to watch something apocalyptic right um <laughs> something dystopian and what i cast on was a susan b anderson smooth operator sock basically and i did it in this i just realized i didn't have anything i could do while reading subtitles and the movie we picked was french so this was already balled up it's West Yorkshire Spinner's four ply, and it's the Wood Pigeon colorway. So all those little bird colors are so sweet. Um, a lot of people have been using pheasant. Um, and there's a Christmas something, Christmas Robin. That's a colorway I've seen a lot. I really liked this one. I got this from the Woolly Thistle. And uh, so it was already in a ball, ready to go. So I just picked it up and I used some pearlescent stroll tonal yarn from Knit Picks that matches perfectly for heels, toes, and cuff. And I basically knit all of the sock minus the heel and the toe during that movie. <laughs> I got so far on it. Um, so the, the second sock will be tonight, I guess. It's kind of nice to knit something so fast. I've already cast on for it. The other show we've been watching, it doesn't have, we aren't watching subtitles. I like the dubbed voices fine. It's because it's anime. It's Attack on Titan, um, <laughs> which is a, well, it's, it's very different. <laughs> it's a very different sort of show. You know, I made it through the first two seasons, and when you get through a show that's like this, there's so much recapping in every episode long opening and ending sequence and then I don't not every anime is like this but quite a few are and actually what it makes me think of is how I'm still reading the Iliad and like so let's say there's even an action scene they can take an action scene and they can make it so long and drawn out for instance you know someone's about to shoot somebody and as they rear back to shoot them all of a sudden they have a thought I remember the day I first held this gun, and then it goes off into this long memory sequence that could be the entire episode. Or it's the entire episode and then they shoot and before the bullet lands, the person who's about to receive the bullet has a memory sequence, you know? And that's the type of show it is. And so we dealt with that for two seasons, and then this third season came out and finally they're explaining things. It's interesting to me. I've actually enjoyed watching it. Um, it's kind of gross, though. Uh, so, that is also true of the Iliad. And let me show you the hat first. This is Sockhead by Kelly McClure. So, you know, Sockhead is knit where you can roll your band up and it can cover your ears and you've still got a little slouchy back to it. But if you really want slouch, you can just not roll it. And then you've really got some a slouch back there. I um, put my dog's toy, I called her Wubba, I put it up in the top of this, and I put my hat on, and the little tentacles, because it looks like an octopus, the tentacles are hanging out around me, and I just would go tch, tch, squeeze it, and of course the squeak is broken, because she's worked it with her jaw so much, but it makes this sound, and she's like, and then I reach up and she was going crazy trying to find where her wubba was. And it was like under this hat on my head. <laughs> anyway, this is that colorway that my friend Sarah dyed. And she had it on Instagram. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful. And she said, this colors make me think of you. I'm going to send it to you. And she sent it to me. And I appreciate, ah, I just found a drop stitch. Dang it. I was so amazed I got through this entire hat without one drop stitch. Ugh. Oh, well, it's just one. I know how to fix it. No big deal. But anyway, isn't it pretty? It does kind of look like the socks, the Michelle colorway to me. So I guess this is like a, a blue gray, grays pinks, kind of a mauve color. I guess it does look like my mix of, these are very natural colors to me. This makes me think of rock. So, thank you, Sarah. I love this hat. 
gonna put it on. So, um, the Iliad still on it. I basically get through three Kindle pages, and when I say Kindle pages, you know, it's a little Kindle, and I have the print blown up because I'm like over 40. I get through like three or four Kindle pages a night, and then I fall asleep. The next night, I, I start back, and it's like this long explanation of an explanation of an explanation of how this person's father got this sword they're fixing to stab someone with, and I can't even remember who was originally holding the sword. Are they a Trojan? Are they an Achaean? So I have to go back and read two pages that I read the night before, and then I get through like one or two more and fall asleep. It's been hard. I think the story itself, the thoughts that people are having as they're fighting, all of that is very interesting to me. It's just, you know, if you've read it, you get used to it, but um, it's not an easy read when you're tired. It, it won't keep you awake to have so many segues, you know? Um, but there are things that are so surprising. And you know, it's not at all really about what I thought it was about. I get that it's about the Trojan War. I really didn't know the story because I've never read it before. That's why I'm reading it. And I thought, this is a tangent, I thought um, it's mostly going to be about Helen and Paris and um, uh, Menelaus, her husband. But it really isn't. It's really about Achilles and his hurt pride and his anger at his king and how he won't fight and help his people and everyone wants him to join the fight but it's like no one they ask him he won't do it no one really pressures him they just accept Achilles his pride has been hurt for good reason and he just won't help us so everyone sets about manipulating each other trying to manipulate the gods the gods manipulating each other because everyone has a stake in what happens you know and the gods are watching and certain ones have favorites they want to help. And uh, it's just really interesting to me that no one really tries to manipulate Achilles. And he's just human. And uh, the story, you know, Hector is, you know his fate. And yet the whole time he believes Zeus is on his side. And he is feeling so relieved and so emboldened and so good about what he's doing. This war he didn't even really want to fight. He's angry with his brother for starting it, but he feels he must to defend his city. And he's just such a tragic character because he really thinks that the gods are on his side. And you know they're not. You know they're just toying with him to give Achilles his wish. He wants the Greeks to really see how... They've wronged him and to be sorry for what they did to him. And then at the last minute, he'll help them. And I don't know. I just found it really interesting to find out kind of what it's really about and to see a little insight into these characters, their motivations and thoughts. And then there's these phrases and things you just wouldn't expect from something so ancient. For instance, like Achilles is getting closer to wanting to fight and his, his best friend, his right-hand man, is crying because he sees the ships are now starting to be burned. The Trojans have driven them back to their ships. They're maybe all going to die. And he comes to Achilles to beg him to at least let him wear Achilles' armor. Just let me dress up like you and go out and maybe it will give us kind of a boost of energy. Let us take our fighters and help them and maybe we can at least save our people's lives. And so he stands by him, it says, and he wept warm tears like a spring dark, running that down the face of a rock impassable drips its dim water. And swift-footed brilliant Achilles looks on him in pity and speaks to him aloud and addresses him in these winged words. Why then are you crying like some poor little girl, Patroclus, who runs after her mother and begs to be picked up and carried and clings to her dress and holds her back when she tries to hurry and gazes tearfully into her face until she is picked up? You're like such a one, dropping these soft tears. Just thought that that long description which sounds really insulting actually um it's just unexpected to me it's very good it's very interesting all of that it's 
I've, I've literally read how 200 different people have died. Like where the spear or the pike was inserted, where it came out, what guts came out with it, how many teeth they lost. It's just a little hard at night. So that's all of my finished stuff that I'm going to show this week. Um, as far as other stuff, because I know we're all just staying in and ingesting things, even if we're just uh, trying to take in a little more nature in our yard or where we can. Um, I've been enjoying Fiona Apple's newest album, Fetch the Bolt Cutters. Uh, I know that she kind of lives a social distancing life anyway, from what I've heard, and has been planning this release for a long time, but how fitting to have a uh, such a song and such an album come out right now. Um, many lyrics can be, I don't know, extra poignant at this moment. So um, Fetch the Bolt Cutters, I've been in here too long, um, does have like a new, I don't know, there's a um, another meaning, it seems, to it during this quarantine. But uh, it's been really good. Also, um, I'm going to have some links to some fun things. Like I saw Yo-Yo Ma and his sister playing when they were children and they first came here to America. Um, it is so good. She's playing piano and he is playing his cello and uh, I enjoyed that, watching that show. And then um, I found a, a cooking show that's been out for several years cooking depression era cooking with Clara and as this young man his grandmother he interviews her and has her talk about the way they cooked in the depression and and they taught they cook different foods than people in the south where I lived um, I, they have an Italian background and so she was making lots of pasta my grandmother didn't really do pasta but a lot of her types of foods do make me think of foods that my uh, great-grandparents or grandparents ate during the depression and she's really sweet and it's all super high carb <laughs> not all of it but some of it however like her uh, pasta sauce or tomato sauce um, recipe I enjoyed that so that's just been interesting to watch and hear her talk about that time in their lives I'm gonna have links to that and then I wanted to um, keep track of all the free patterns that had come out and I was going to tell you guys about them. And in the last episode I told you about some, well then it was this whole slew of patterns and then they all expired because it's been a month. But Talitha had a point. She made a point in her, the comments that if you look in the hot right now on the Ravelry homepage, and I think everybody knows how to do this, but just in case you don't, I think I'll show you. So when I click on patterns on Ravelry, I've heard a lot of people, even some designers recently say they don't know how to navigate Ravelry. So I think it's worth showing this. Oh, did I literally run out of battery? <laughs> okay, it's like, that is too perfect. So here's my Ravelry homepage. When I click, not the homepage, it's when I click patterns up here. This is what it looks like. So if I scroll up a bit, on the left side, there's this box and it says hot right now. So these are the most cued and favorited and bought patterns right now. And then here is from those kind of new patterns that are being released. These are designers that I've bought from before or bought similar types things of things or have queued up or favorited. So this is kind of geared toward me, but this is the hot right now. And so I, I look at both. I'll click this and I'll see new things that have come out and sometimes they have a discount because they're new and that's how I find out that the discounts happening because I'm not on Instagram all that much lately. I just got a little overwhelmed with social media. So um, I'll do that to find new patterns and the sale. But Talitha was saying if you click hot right now, it's going to come up on the screen. This is all the new patterns that are hot right now. Often one of the reasons they're hot right now is because they're free or they're new and for a limited time they will be discounted or free and I found a lot of good things that way um, this pangolin by Heidi and Anna Pickles this is new I haven't seen this 
this is a paid for pattern, but that's interesting. It's really neat. <laughs> um, here's one I found doing that yesterday. Lucinda Iglesias. It is called Social Distancing, and it's a free download on Ravelry. And it's a long wrap. It could be a scarf, shawl, wrap. It's a long rectangle. Those are beautiful shelter colors, I think. That's a worsted weight wrap. And I think that's a, a great way to use similar colors. And I believe it uses a mosaic stitch. But let me show you something new. So there's a bunch of cute things like that. Oh, here's a crochet one. The Perfect Pockets Shawl. This is also a paid for pattern. But it's a shawl with little pockets. So it's almost got a poncho look to it. That is by Sonia Hood. So something I've been, um, someone I've seen some free patterns from is Anna Johanna. Um, she does Where We Once Knitted. That's her blog and her uh, knitwear company. And she's designed quite a bit, but here's a few free things. She's got a, a bundle of free patterns if you look under her name on uh, Ravelry and like I said I'm gonna have links to everything in the Ravelry group on the thread epi the episode thread or here on YouTube these are surprise stripes and this is a stash buster thigh high sock pattern it's really cute and being thigh high that's a good way to get rid of some old scraps and um, I don't know that's extra fun and then she did these scrap yarn sock advent calendar Um, it's scrap socks with advent calendar scraps and those are really popular at Christmas time so those are both free patterns that she offers but let me just say this she's got some non free patterns that are really nice a new one that I just saw that came out is easy so it's a really cute open front cardigan that's a very nice easy fit right but then the back is has an interesting lace pattern where the two sides seem to converge. Here's what I want to make by her, other than the socks I just showed you. It's called Harmus. I believe it's a sport weight pattern. It is. And it's just one of those. It's that fit that I love. It's, it's drop sleeve. Well, I'm not sure if it's drop sleeve but it's oversized and uh, the side, you know, like it would come out to here on either side and it's cropped and it's a very easy fit. Plus it's got a cowl neck, turtleneck and it's textural. So it's like lots of the things I love. I'm really interested in knitting Harmus before next winter. So that's like, I just wanted to share a little free pattern with you because I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty excited about uh, designers that will put out some things everybody can attain and do. And I'm like you've seen, I'm excited about yarn that is affordable, things that are attainable for people. I think that's kind of my um, interest. It's not that I don't have uh, some luxury yarns. I do, but I'm, I also like the other. I appreciate it. So... Did I cover everything? Talitha had said that when she is looking at free patterns, she tries not to be like gluttonous with it. She will only buy it if she thinks she'll use it because she doesn't want to take advantage. Let me say this. I agree with you uh, to a point because I saw when I was trying to um, and keep track of all these free patterns to tell you guys about a few weeks ago on the uh, podcast I I started putting them in my library and I was like well I can just go to my library then and show them well I had no idea how many there were going to be and after a, a day I'm like oh my gosh I I'm gonna fill my library with so many free patterns and there's nothing wrong with that but I'm not gonna knit all these so there's no need in grabbing and you know I don't have to collect and hoard free patterns, right? So I can see what you're saying, Talitha, but at the same time, um, a lot of designers are just designing for free. 
just to share the love. But quite a few are giving things free right now out of generosity, yet it helps them when you buy the pattern, when you purchase it, and it really helps them when you favorite and um, cue it. It actually raises them in the algorithm. It makes them a little more sought after and more seen on Ravelry. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with um, taking a free pattern. Not that you think there's anything wrong either, but um, if I think I might make it, if I'm on the fence about it, let's say it's a pattern that's discounted um, for the first few weeks or that's just being discounted for 50%. A few people have done that recently, and I'm on the fence. I wouldn't pay full price for it because I don't know that I'll ever get around to making it. I have enough patterns to keep me busy the rest of my life. But I think, wait, I'm not going to buy that unless it's discounted. I'm not even sure if I'll buy it discounted, but wouldn't they rather make a half sale than no sale at all on me? And so they probably would appreciate me buying it at half price if I wasn't probably going to buy it otherwise. So I do take advantage sometimes of that, but I also know what you mean. Like if I'm going to download something for free on Ravelry, I'm also going to favorite it and or queue it because that helps them. That gives something back to the designer at least. And then exposure when you do actually make it. I like though that you're trying to be considerate. I think that's really sweet of you. And I want to be that way too. So yeah, I quit buying every single free thing to show you guys because I realized none of these things are going to be available when I finally get around to posting an episode. Huh. So what, what should we talk about next week? Um, I mentioned this pressure to achieve or accomplish or get your whole life together while you're quarantining from a disease. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, if you have any thoughts about that, please share. And if you've been um, tackling any inner work that you want to be real realistic about and share, go for it. Uh, that could get pretty deep. I can just say this. I've been working on some insecurities and kind of getting my footing back in areas that I left abandoned in me for a while. So it's been hard, like really hard, but also... Um, I think ultimately it's going to be very good for me. And uh, if you want to get deep like that, go for it. Or you can just tell me about some cute tops. Um, what summer tops are you interested in making? Give me some ideas for my super bright green yarn and any new crochet. Are any of you who are knitters getting a little more into crochet? or uh, interested in any new crochet patterns that are out. I'm going to talk about new crochet patterns next week. All right. That was good to talk to you guys again. I'll see you next week. Hopefully. Bye.